What's going on there, folks? Uh, good morning, good afternoon. The Earthmaster here uh, on the live stream this Monday morning uh, with an update video. January uh, 31st, the last day of January 2022, about 11.14 a.m. California time. And the uh, latest quake out there on the globe is a 2.9 earthquake way up here along the Aleutian Trench, actually just outside of the Alaska region uh, into the Gulf of Alaska. looks like uh, somewhat of a deeper earthquake there into the subduction zone at 106 kilometers uh, below the surface for that earthquake. Uh, by the way, the stream is back up and running and uh, issues going on overnight uh, once again with the stream magically coming down, but uh, we're narrowing the uh, options um, as far as the uh, culprit goes uh, down to a couple things. So hopefully that gets corrected. So a little bit of earthquake activity this morning kicking off in the middle of the country towards the Southern Plains, a 4.5 earthquake striking in the Medford, Oklahoma area. Uh, felt broadly throughout Kansas and the Oklahoma region. This earthquake struck at about 7.8 kilometers below the surface. Uh, looking at the Did You Fill It reports, here is the border of the Kansas and Oklahoma area in this line. Looks like it was felt uh, pretty much all over Dodge City area up into the Great Bend area. And uh, looks like the, at least around the epicenter north, northeast of the Ennid area, experience some uh, strong shaking there maybe a couple folks reported very strong uh, from this 4.5 earthquake pretty shallow earthquake i uh, was looking at the uh, locations here of uh, this 4.5 that struck and it is uh, surrounded by quite a few oil pumping operations out there in the land uh, to see that uh, activity we got to go down to the satellite view and uh, there's no doubt it is surrounded by quite a few uh, pumping operations. Of course, here's the little community down here, but these oil rigs, these oil pumping operations, looks like little squares or rectangles on the map. And when you go in and view them, well, they uh, they can kind of be, uh, kind of look like farmhouses in a way. And uh, most of the time you'll see tanks. And tanks are kind of, uh, well, it, I can't really tell specifically on this map here, but they're kind of white rectangle type things out here in the in the little circles, if you will, or in the uh, squares <laughs> and rectangles. Uh, and they're out there. There's quite a few of them out there. Uh, to get a, a closer view, I'd have to bring up Google Earth, but uh, there's definitely pumping operations out there in the region. And uh, just kind of a, let's see here. Let's go ahead and zoom up here. Most of the time they're off the road a little bit, off on some dirt roads. There's some old ones out there too, kind of not showing up. But uh, yeah, so I've I, uh, been watching that for a while. Of course, a lot of people uh, think these oil pumping operations, fracking operations and whatnot, uh, contributing to strain in the earth's crust out there, or uh, it could be injection water the uh, wastewater injection uh, where they pump uh, this the uh, oh the uh, byproduct of the oil and gas drilling right you got this some type of salty uh, issue salty water gets injected back into the ground uh, known as wastewater it can activate uh, old fault systems or it could just uh, create earthquakes in itself out there hidden fault lines throughout the region uh, and there's a uh, there's definitely been a whole bunch of chat about the uh, about it causing earthquakes, and uh, kind of a firm believer in that. Uh, I've seen this activity throughout the years, uh, especially down in the Texas and all up through Oklahoma area. Uh, whenever they have earthquakes, it's mostly around um, some pumping operations there in the uh, in the region. There's a lot of them. Go ahead and check out these earthquakes that struck here uh, earlier, and you can see uh, all these squares and whatnot. Uh, little pumping operations out there, a little pond, and uh, earthquakes nearby, very close nearby. So it's un it's unfortunately, but it's that's I firmly believe that's exactly what we've seen up here uh, this morning with that Medford, Oklahoma uh, earthquake, 4.5. It's up there in the. Uh, you want to read it, Wakita Trin Gas Field. Okay, that's pretty obvious uh, what's going on up there, you know, and, and uh, it happens. Sometimes these earthquakes can be larger than a 4.5. Most of the time they're not. 
range in the two to three range or the uh, microquake area but uh, occasionally we get a little bit of buildup of stress out here along the North American plate and ultimately we see uh, this activity man-made activity I guess if you will um, in the uh, the oil fields and the gas fields and uh, that's exactly what we're seeing right there folks 4.5 it has been followed up it looks like by uh, some aftershock activity if you if you can call it that uh, pretty uh, quickly if after the 4.5 the main quake there was a uh, little 1.6 within the vicinity a couple hours prior to it I remember though uh, the stress is out there along a plate boundary. Well, this ain't a plate boundary, but in the plate itself, uh, just because it's away from the plate boundary uh, does not mean that there's pressure out there, and there's always pressure out there on any given plate, whether it's in the middle or away off on the plate boundary area. So uh, kind of seeing that um, telltale sign of some increased activity here in the center part of the country, right, uh, right in the uh, North American plate. Uh, activity continued, of course, down here at southwest of Oklahoma City, and a little swarm of movement. There's no doubt plate boundaries, old plate or uh, old fault systems, I should say. Got the uh, the hills out here, the Wichita Mountains, and some other plate systems or uh, fault systems. Keep playing plate systems. It's fault systems. There we go out here in this area around uh, Quinton. This area sees quite a bit of movement around this area. Let's go ahead and check out the hazard map. And uh, this shows kind of like the seismic hazard region zone of uh, fault systems. But, uh, you know, this USGS map has it marked up here as well uh, around the Oklahoma City area. But uh, if you look up here to the north where there's not a whole lot of fault systems, uh, of course, natural fault systems or studied fault systems, uh, it's, it's out, of the, uh, out of the reach of that bullseye. And uh, no doubt uh, right here, this pretty much says it all. Wakita Trend Gas Field. That's pretty much all you need to know when it comes to the reason for this uh, this morning's earthquake activity. Let's back out of the fault systems here. And uh, check out the new Madrid zone, right? Major player in producing a couple of large earthquakes back in the 1800s there. Of course, this area is still alive. There's been some chat about it not being active. But man, we see uh, we definitely see earthquake activity out there. Um, throughout the uh, throughout the region on any given day, any given month. Let me go back the last 30 days. We haven't seen a whole lot, but uh, sometimes we get some activity out there in the uh, in the uh, two to two to up, upper two range in the new Madrid zone that sits around here. Uh, over the past 30 days, it's been relatively quiet. Only about 17 earthquakes in this area of the new Madrid zone, and uh, it sits in a highly uh, high area of uh, extreme damage or uh, hazard if you will when it comes to uh, the fault uh, systems out here and the potential to create a large damaging earthquake right there in the uh, brown at least it looks kind of brown here on this end all the activity has been confined to that area so uh, it is alive and well um, and one day will possibly produce a another large earthquake who knows when just uh all I know is it is definitely active and it continues to show earthquake activity um, pretty much any given day. East Coast, pretty quiet, not a whole lot going on there. We did see a swarm of movement kick up in the Puerto Rico Trench area. This, this area up here to the north it extends over here to the east. This area right here, very capable of producing uh, probably an 8.0 magnitude earthquake. Uh, it's been pretty quiet as far as producing any large ones, but uh, the potential is definitely there. Today, only a bunch of handful of threes up along the Puerto Rico Trench. Haiti area has remained uh, quiet over the last 24 hours. And uh, other areas to the west here. We did see this little one here north of Honduras yesterday. That's about ready to drop off the map. A little 4.5 uh, just offshore. Uh, checking out the west coast region. Some activity kicking up in the uh, Ridgecrest area right here. And also across the Garlock Fault Structure. Uh, Johannesburg getting in on a 1.1, not a big earthquake, but a little bit of movement here along the Garlock Shear Fault System and uh, activity stretching up here into the San Andreas Fault. It's kind of a kind of right at the southern end of the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault along the uh, 
uh, park build section. It looks like Pine Rock Fault. Uh, let's see what we got. Creeping section. Yeah, it kind of extends into the creeping section down here near the park field section. So a little bit of activity on the uh, plate boundary here of the North American and Pacific plate uh, kicking up here within the last 24 hours. Uh, movement is continuing in the Northern California area. The uh, live stream there that I have on the, uh, or the uh, seismograph I have on the live stream cannot access the uh, Petrolia station, which is a station I monitor here for uh, localized earthquake activity. So uh, something weird going on with these seismographs. I don't know why they're not coming in, but their uh, data is not flowing through them. I do have a, another station called Dinsmore in this area that uh, does monitor the activity, but just not as well as the other station I like to monitor. But uh, getting back to the activity, it is continuing here. Uh, a couple ones and some twos kicking off here, including a deep 1.8 at 17.6 kilometers into the southern end of the Cascadia Megathrust. Uh, now, just because this map shows the Cascadia Megathrust offshore, that's the locked area, uh, ultimately where the energy, energy will be released. Uh, it does extend all the way up past the Vancouver Island ranges, uh, but the deeper activity extends underneath the North American plate. Of course, the further east you go here, down dip, uh, you get into the uh, major subduction zone as the, uh, you get some trimmer activity, uh, a little bit less. Uh, it's kind of a not quite like an earthquake, but a slow slip of energy, kind of more or less like a vibration down dip downstream. And uh, last night, I uh, had a little bit of activity here. We'll check out the trimmer map. Just six trimmers. Not a, That's not a big deal. We're still in a pretty a lengthy, quiet period of trimmer activity normally. Uh, we get these uh, hundreds, 200, 300 days of trimmer activity, 300 trimmers in a day, I should say, uh, in any given region of the Cascadia. And it's been awfully quiet, awfully quiet uh, for several weeks now into the, uh, pretty much into the entire length of the Cascadia. So what that means, I, I don't know, it's hard to say, but we do go through uh, periods of quiet spells and... Uh, up here on the chart, you can kind of see uptick and trimmer, and uh, of course, days of no trimmer. But uh, as far as weeks and months of no trimmer, I mean, it's it's kind of just a little odd. I guess I can kind of compare that to the activity prior to the 2011 era, uh, back before we uh, uh, had that nine pointer in the Japan region. We started to see a re uptick in trimmer activity. Um, after that mega quake back in Japan in 2011. So uh, that's kind of why I'm watching the Japan area. It's been all too quiet as well. Uh, we, we just haven't seen a lot of movement up here in this area of the uh, Japan Trench, Kuro Kamchaka Trench, a major area and producing uh, not only large earthquakes through here, but uh, accumulated stress buildup is super high. It uh, doesn't take too much, too much uh, time to build up enough stress to release a powerful earthquake. So that remains pretty quiet, folks. Let me tell you, it's, uh, it's looking, uh, it's almost like one of the two. It's like, which one, Japan or the West Coast? I mean, it's just kind of, it's kind of there. Uh, what else we got? That was weird. Something just moved on the computer desk. I did not even touch it. Kermadec Trench, still seeing an uh, uptick in activity here over the last 24 hours. This region here seen a uh, 6.4 earthquake. Let's go back here the last seven days, check out uh, the activity here in the Kermadec Trench. These guys are getting some upper fives, almost another six pointer. Okay, so 6.5, looks like they re-upgraded it. I, I don't know why those guys do it. They go from a 6.4, 6.6, 6.4, 6.5. And it takes them several days or a couple days at least to figure that out. Of course, I understand looking at different states, stations and whatnot uh, can determine the ultimate magnitude, but it uh, seems to happen a lot there. So 6.5 struck uh, a couple days ago now, and uh, we've seen quite a bit of aftershock activity in the region, including the 5.9 overnight, or earlier this morning, I should say. So, uh, you know, it's a, a pretty significant size swarm. It's a lot of activity for just a 6.5. In this region right here, very capable of producing a uh, pretty large magnitude earthquake. I believe we've seen the eight-pointer last year within this region, just south here, I believe. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's an entire length of a subduction zone here, and there's been a lot of activity striking in this region, not only the volcanic activity here around Tonga, but some major deep movement up here in the Fiji area with um, some over 600 kilometers there deep. 
in the uh, area of the uh, the trench, the Tonga Trench area. So uh, something going on there. A whole lot of a uh, whole lot of activity over the last uh, couple of weeks there, and also today. So pay close attention here to this region, Tonga area. Right now, not a whole lot of movement around the volcanoes. No deep activity over the last 24 hours. But like I mentioned there, over the last week, we uh, last couple of weeks, we definitely seen movement. Indonesia, Solomon Islands, and Papua New Guinea all looking pretty quiet today. Only a small little count of earthquakes here. Um, let's see, what do we got? 4.2. That one pretty deep. 552 kilometers here. Uh, just outside the Banda Sea region. Up here to the north, China, uh, Myanmar area, all pretty quiet. Pakistan did have a 4.1. A little bit of movement in the Turkey area. I love it when the train drives by. Uh, when I'm doing a mid-update, uh, Owen Fracture Zone also getting in on a little swarm. Look at that. A couple fives there, 5.2 in the 3 times 3. That's uh, pretty crazy. So a little bit of movement there, kicking up there in the Owen Fracture Zone. Uh, Africa pretty quiet, and the Atlantic Ocean all quiet as well. So uh, let's see what else we got here. Yellowstone, I believe we've seen a little bit of activity down here. Um... Is this the latest map? Because it's where I've seen some activity here this morning. Kicking up. I'm not seeing it though. Hmm, that's pretty odd. Alright, well, at least for now everything looks pretty quiet. There at Yellowstone, not a whole lot of uh, earthquake activity occurring, but... Uh, Keeping an eye on it. Solar weather uptick as well, folks. We're looking at solar weather increasing there with a the potential threat uh, of solar flaring. Uh, these guys still having the threat level set at 90% uh, chance of sea flare. Of course, we're hovering around the sea flare areas there with the crackling of the, uh, the uh, sunspots. X flare potential at a 10% chance here. Uh, M flare at 40 from the uh, ginormous sunspot here, 2936, which is in Earth view at the moment. So anything uh, that does pop off will be uh, pretty much a bullseye effect here on the planet. So... We'll cover that a little bit more later, folks. Just wanted to get the stream back up and running, which it is. Get an update video going, uh, which I just did. Hopefully the stream stays up. I'm going to talk to my ISP later, see if they can help me out here with any uh, any uh, telltale signs of what's going on. As uh, far as the stream going down randomly between 3 to 4 in the morning. Uh, nothing here on this end. Uh, I think it's somebody who's getting up in the morning. Maybe has to go to work or... Maybe it's somebody working there at the uh, ISP. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to call them, uh, get in contact with someone other than just tech support and uh, find out what's going on here. And they can hopefully tell me if it's coming from this end or if it's a YouTube server or if it's there at the ISP. Because uh, it's getting annoying. It's like four nights in a row now. The stream will magically go down. And uh, it's it's right on cue. It's like 3, 4 in the morning when, when somebody's uh, pushing a button or is waking up. But uh, it's definitely going to stop. All right, guys, we'll be back in a little bit, a little bit later this afternoon, or this evening, I should say, uh, unless something major happens. Stay safe out there. North American Plate, obviously, under uh, quite a bit of pressure out there with the uh, Oklahoma earthquake activity and the West Coast region ramping up. Uh, have a good Monday, folks. Enjoy your day. We'll be back a little bit later.